Now, over a year ago, I set myself one of my most ambitious goals ever. I want to try to earn the most expensive gear that you can get in every offer slot, starting from absolutely nothing. So I started with only one gold piece, and we've been flipping items, buying and selling for a while now, and of course, there's been ups and downs, but let's see how far we can get today. Now, in the previous episode, I ended up buying an Elijah Spirit Shield, and I was considering just keeping it as one of my final items because it is currently the most expensive item in the offhand slot, and we'll need to buy it eventually, unless the Ward of Alidness ends up being more expensive. Uh, so that's a consideration. Now, I bought it for 891 mil, and I equipped it, and I was like, hey, maybe I'm gonna keep this, but I decided pretty quickly I am not going to. We of course are still going to need to get it eventually, but I've come to realize that there are actually a few other more pressing items that I should buy as we are approaching Raids 3. Now the rules I'm following is once I buy an item, it's locked in. I don't need to go buy a new item in the future that happens to get released because then the series would just literally never end. So with that logic, there's actually a few much more important items I need to buy quickly before the release of Raids 3, that being the Masary Helmet that'll be much more valuable than the Torva helmet, which is currently the most expensive headgear item, and maybe even the light bearer. So those are the items I'm gonna try to prioritize to buy today instead. So because of that, I sold my Elijah back, and uh, we actually sold it for a bit of a profit. We sold it for nearly 900 mil, which actually means we ended up with a four mil profit. And one final bit of housekeeping from the last episode, unfortunately, uh, we had these Bow of Fair Dinans for a while. I bought them for 145 mil and sold them for 137-ish after taxes, which is actually pretty significant loss of 44 mil, which is a bit of a bummer. Just a few bad decisions in a row, but we're going to try to turn this around. So currently the date is April 23rd. Raids 3 is still a while away, I presume, at least not until the summer. And we're looking for another investment here. So whenever I'm looking for an item to invest in, I tend to go look at the Gillenor Gazette and see if they have a fairly up-to-date release schedule, although this is never that accurate. It does give a loose ballpark to when updates are coming out. Now one thing that has definitely caught my eye is the Giant Foundry. It's supposedly going to be one of the upcoming updates, although we don't know the release date or much about it, but I went and googled the word Foundry, and uh, apparently it's like a smithery, so this is almost certainly a smithing update, so we're actually going to start stockpiling some smithing items. I'm not quite sure yet what, but I think Steel Bars is probably a pretty safe bet. So we have an offering for a million of them at 460 GP, and I might add on some more bars as well as we get closer and closer to the update. And we're also going to try flipping some Elijahs because we have a fair bit of money left over. Okay, so we sold them actually for a 6.8 mil profit, but the fees really eat up into that one. 10 mil of that is taxes, which kind of sucks. So we only profited actually about 3 mil on that. Now in the last episode we did something kind of interesting. For the first time I traded over a bit of money to a alt account to try to do some flips on the side. I just kind of wanted something to do while I was waiting for these long term investments to come in. Try some lower stake flips while I'm waiting anyway and not clog up all my offer slots on the main flipping account. So I traded over 100 mil to another account, bought a bond on it so it's all paid for with actual money I earned, and I just wanted to see how well I could do in the length of the bond. So we tried a few different types of items, I tried Shattered Relic League items because I thought they had really good margins, and they did. While the bond was active, I really tried flipping a ton of different items. We flipped nearly 100 cannon ornament kits, a nearly 100 void ornament kits, so we did a lot of it. I even ended up repurchasing another bond. But pretty quickly, I discovered the ham joint. The ham joint is the item I flipped by far the most, over 150 times, and the best part about it is it's actually a free-to-play item, which means once I figured out that I could just try to flip this over and over again, I let my membership lapse and we just went to town on it. We ended up making over 18 mil just on the ham joint, totally in free-to-play, and I found this just to be a lower stress way to make some money on the side while not even having to buy bonds. In the end, I actually ended up making about a 52 mil profit using this account for about a month. I think if I paid it a bit more attention, definitely you can make more money, but it was just a bit of a side project. We made 52 mil profit after taxes, but we did have to pay for bonds, which I think took away at least about 10 mil. Still a fun little project and something that, well, turned out to be quite profitable. So finally, more information has been released about the Giants Foundry, and it's kind of both good and bad. 
The good part is that we actually ended up buying the correct items. We've been slowly buying steel bars, mithril bars, and adamant bars. The problem right now is uh, we're buying them for a bit of an inflated price, and it's uncertain whether or not the Giant's Foundry is going to be in any way, shape, or form good. The current pitch seems like it's very underwhelming as far as experience rates, so if they keep it the way it is, I think it's going to be a bit of a bust, but I have a feeling that they're going to make some changes, so we're going to wait and see if this week anything new kind of comes up, because that will definitely change our decision. Alright, so some changes have been made, and I am glad I waited. We continue to slowly buy mithril bars, adamant bars, and steel bars throughout the week. We currently have managed to collect around 580,000 steel bars, 230,000 adamant bars, and around 240,000 mithril bars. Now previously I was just kind of buying these as a general investment because I just assumed that they would go up with a new Smithy minigame release. But I'm actually a little more optimistic about this investment now due to one main thing. On May 6th, Jagex proposed the Smith's uniform that when you have the whole thing, it'll actually improve the speed of anvil smithing. So not only is the Giant's Foundry itself going to require these items, but I think in the future, anvil smithing could become a lot more popular because it is actually a pretty comparable way to train this skill. And it was already pretty quick to begin with. So I think well into the future, adamant mithril bars could just continue to rise. But either way, I think there definitely is some room to make some money here. So this is where things get a little dicey. I'm leaving for a vacation that is going to be five weeks and I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going to bring my phone with me so I will be able to make a few changes if necessary, but I'm not going to be monitoring this super closely. So while I'm gone, I'm going to put some offers in for mithril bars at 800 GP, adamantite bars at 2150, and probably some more steel bars at around 410. And we're not gonna be checking this, we're just gonna leave it. Unfortunate timing, but what can you do? So we waited and waited and waited, and finally, at the beginning of June, the foundry has come out. Now unfortunately, all I have is a phone recording of this, but you can see that all my offers had come through. All the steel bars, mithril bars, and adamant bars, all purchased. And after withdrawing everything from my bank, we actually ended up with nearly a million steel bars, 360,000 adamantite bars, and about 500,000 mithril bars. So the update came out really recently, and after all this waiting, how much money are we looking to make here? Well, mithril bars have gone up by about 200 GP each, which means we're looking to make uh, about 60 mil on the mithril bars, and around 30 mil on the adamant bars, not too much on the steel bars as of yet. The update's very fresh though, and I think maybe as the meta gets a bit more established, these could continue to go up more as people get the Smith's uniform and try out the new smithy method. So I'm actually going to try to sell these for a little bit above what they are now, and see if we can eke out a bit more money. So I'm actually going to try to sell these for a little bit above what they are now, and see if we can eke out a bit more money. Oh guys, why did I why did I do that? <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on vacation. I, I obviously wasn't really thinking that straight. I probably should have just sold those for a profit right then. The part that kind of got me is the Smith's uniform. I thought that speeding up the anvil smithing would be very popular and could make adamant bars and mithril bars way more expensive, but I think it overestimated how popular that was gonna be or how strong it was gonna be, and it had almost no effect. Once the hype for the foundry died off, the prices crashed pretty much right back to where they were before, and now we're stuck with not really a negative investment, just a colossal waste of time. A bit of a bummer, but uh, the only positive thing here is that we actually are able to sell our steel bars for a bit of a profit. We've sold over half of them off, and I think we're going to profit around 25 mil on the steel bars, which is, yeah, that's kind of nice, I guess. But unfortunately, after selling off the rest of our bars, and due to taxes, we might actually end up losing a bit. Not a substantial amount of money or anything, it just was a waste of time, unfortunately. And on top of obviously not selling at the right time, I think I also overestimated how much the price of these items could even move, swing up and down very much. They're pretty ingrained into the economy, and there's a huge amount of volume for these bars. I don't think we were ever going to make a ton of money here, but it was worth a try, and we're Really, most of what we wasted here is time. But of course, we're not done trying here. We're moving on to something else. I'm done with these bars. They're sold off pretty much. Now, one thing I've been slowly buying for a couple days now are Vigora's chain maces. We're buying them for 7.2 mil. Mainly because there's a fair bit of uncertainty with these items. There's theoretically going to be a new wilderness boss come out pretty soon. No idea when exactly. But it's marked in the release schedule for some time in early summer. And luckily I was actually able to snag 45 chain maces for about 
7.2 mil each, which is already a fairly inflated price. But if we have a look on GE Tracker, they've actually spiked right now by around a mil. So I'm not gonna make the same mistake as last time. We're just gonna sell now. That's a decent profit for very little work. We should be making around 35, 40 mil in profit, something like that. So we bought them for 325 mil. Let's see what we can end up selling them for because we definitely need a win here. Oh my God, it finally happened. This is not a drill. I've had these 4,000 slimy eels for a long time now. If you recall, I bought these as a very speculative investment for when that backported quest came out. Uh, didn't end up working out, but after months and months and months of waiting, we can finally sell these for a profit, or at least uh, not much of a loss. I knew holding these would finally pay off. So we are waiting for a few things to sell off here. We got the chain maces, the slime eels, of course, now, one other item that's kind of intrigued me a bit is the Blighted Super Restore. Uh, the logic combined this now is once the Wilderness bosses get reworked, presumably there's going to be a ton of people trying them out. The Blighted Super Restores are probably going to be the most popular way to restore your prayer in the Wilderness, as they are still substantially cheaper than the real version. We're going to try buying, I think, 50,000 of them for now. We'll see how that works out. All right, so I'm happy to report we finally have a solid profit here. We sold the Vigorous Chain Mazes for a mil profit. Of course, we do have to subtract the fees from that. But after everything was said and done, we netted a 32 mil profit on this investment, which I'm really happy about. Now it's just about July, and I think it's just about time we start making an investment or two for the Raids 3 release, which apparently is going to be coming sometime in August, so only around a month away. We're going to start off by buying some Arcane Sigils for about 165 mil. Once again, this is going to be used in the Ward of Lydnes. I don't expect it to spike as much as it did the first time. Still, if it goes up 20 or 30 mil each, that's still a pretty nice profit, which I'd definitely be happy with. At the beginning of the episode, I mentioned uh, that I wanted to buy the Torp of Full Helm, and I do. One thing I forgot about then, though, is I actually don't have the defense level to equip it yet. So I think in the next week or two, I'm going to work on getting 80 defense on this account. We're at 75 already, so it's not actually too much further. From there, we'll be able to equip the Torp of Full Helm and lock it in before the Masary Helmet comes out. And you also kind of want to consider and get your guys' opinion. Do you think that piece of equipment will be worth more than two or 300 mil after the dust has settled? I'm not actually as sure anymore. Helmets in general just aren't usually as priority but yeah what do you guys think in the end another couple months of ups and downs uh, but that said I think we did manage to just struggle our way to around a hundred mil profit as we're currently at around 2.6 bill it's been a difficult couple months of flipping for me and I'm not really sure if there's a reason for it but as always we're just gonna move forward and see if we can do better next time thanks for watching and I will see you next time Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to March3258, who just joined the Dragon Tier, joining the Hybrid, Alejandra, and Kush Patel. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Also, thank you to YoYoSub89, Carter, Mexos, and NDM001 for subscribing at the Runite Tier. Again, thank you so much. As always, if you're looking for a way to support the channel directly, YouTube membership is a great way to do so get immortalized in all of my future videos, and get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.